This video is brought to you by Truefire. Truefire's course library features over 50,000 interactive video guitar lessons covering all styles, techniques, and levels. Over 2 million guitar players worldwide learn, practice, and play with Truefire. Sign up for a free trial at Truefire and save 30% off your first or next purchase with the promo code AXEFC30. Grab your guitar and ignite your musicality. Learn, practice, and play with Truefire. What's going on everybody? And in this week's lesson, we are talking triads. And we're gonna go over six great riffs that rather than having power chords or bar chords or single notes as their primary source material, these riffs have triads as their foundation, right? Now, personally, I think triads are a great resource for guitar players. They tend to be underutilized, but they're great for fretboard navigation, visualization, and making connections to maybe some of the um, scales that you already know, okay? So I am in standard tuning. Down in the description below, you can find a link for the tabs, and let's get started. The first example is from the funk band Wolfpack. Can't talk triads without talking some funk. And I wanna start out with this one because this is the only example where we're playing the first three strings on the guitar, okay? So let's play the example and then we will discuss some of the chords that are going on. And it sounds like this. Awesome fun song. Back Pocket by Wolfpack is great. Now, the chords in this song, right, we have a major triad right here, and this is in fifth position, so it's seven, seven, five. This is root position, meaning the root note is on the G string, and it's root, third, fifth, okay? We move up to a whole step, it's nine, eight, seven. This is a minor triad, now in root position. And if you can c compare those two shapes, this one is seven, seven, five. If I make this one minor, the note in the middle has to come down one fret, and now it's a minor chord, okay? So that's what's going on here in seventh position. Then we're gonna come down the third position. This is a C chord, five, five, three. And then we're gonna dip down a half step and play minor in second position, four, three, two, right? repeat that strum pattern, right? It's great, syncopated, and lots of funky dead notes going on. I'm not really gonna break down the rhythm and how to play it specifically, or the strumming pattern, just wanted to show you the riff based on triads. So now, let's move over, let's talk about one of the greatest hard rock albums ever, and that's Van Halen, and the opening track of their debut album is Running With The Devil. Now, this song is down a half a step. I am in standard tuning, so, you know, whatever. Let's not lose anything about it. And let's hear how that sounds and we'll talk about those chords, okay? <laughs> All right, you get the idea. That's the opening riff for Running with the devil, okay? And again, we're moving to the next string set. We're gonna be on strings two, three, and four, and that means we have some new chord shapes, okay? So the first two chords are, we're basically taking from this bar chord shape, right? C and D right here. But we're only playing the triad itself. So it's five, 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 and then seven, seven, seven. Right, and there'll be times when you play this chord with your first finger, and there'll be times when you play it with your third finger. Okay, so just don't stress out about which finger you're gonna voice the chord with, okay? And this particular chord is a, what we consider a second inversion, meaning the root note is in the middle, the third is the higher note, and the fifth is the lower note. Now next in this song, we have, we introduce this chord shape. Right, this is nine, seven, eight. This is an extremely common chord. You're gonna see this a lot. And this movement is actually pretty cliche. You see it a lot in a lot of rock, classic rock, all that kind of stuff. And this is a first inversion triad, this one right here, meaning your third is on the low, fifth, and then your root note is the highest one. Okay, so it's five, seven, 
move here. And the way you play that is you throw on the first chord, and then your middle finger and ring finger are gonna hammer down on the appropriate strings, okay? And all we're gonna do is move that up a whole step and then play them backwards. So it's this, this, oh, sorry. Like that, okay? And there you go, there's Running With The Devil. Another classic riff, just again, based on triads, okay? So let's keep it in the hard rock realm and one that maybe some of you already know, a lot of the beginner guitar players always wanna play this song and that is Crazy Train from Ozzy Osbourne. And I'm not talking about that riff, I'm talking about the verse riff, which happens next. Right? That whole verse riff. And again, look what we're doing here. We have a major chord, root position, right? Seven, six, five. And this triad is taken from this bar chord shape, which hopefully most of you know this already. We're just isolating those three strings, seven, six, five. And then we're moving that down and we're playing essentially the first inversion shape. And to do that, we just take our first two fingers and swap the strings they're playing. Now it's six, four, five. Move that down a whole step to D, and then the other chord that we saw from the devil, two, two, two. With the A underneath it, you have a big A. Right, and this one is introducing some of the classic metal kind of ideas where we're chugging on our, on a string below it, right? It's got the A underneath it. The 16th notes. And if you can't do that, that's all right. Just play eighth notes for now. And when you kind of see this and you know what chords there are, things that you can take away from this, again, your one, four, five chords are extremely common in music, right? If we're in the key of A, that means I'm playing A is my four chord, D is my, I mean, A is my one chord, D is my four, E is my five, right? A, B, C, D, E, there you go. Right? If you were playing a different style of music, you might do that. But here, Randy Rose decides to add the chug and use the triads to create a nice moving, yet somewhat static riff centered around A. Right? There you go. Crazy train. Very fun. All right. So next, we're going to dial back the gain a little bit and we're going to move to some sob rock territory and John Mayer. We're going to take a look at his first single off his recent album and that is Last Train Home and again it's using chords that we've seen so far which is nice and it sounds like this. <clears throat> right? Fun little song, great pop song. Very Steve Winwood-esque, even the video, it's got the jacket. It's pretty funny, throwback to the 80s, super popular right now. But again, it's a great song and it's a great part. All right, we have an A chord, 11, 9, 10. Moving to E, which is 9, 9, 9. There's that movement again. And it repeats. Then we'll play B and E. 9, 8, 7 is B, again, taken from your B bar chord. And you can play these as bar chords just to see where they come from, right? But as guitar players, we're usually playing in a band, right? And depending on what style of band you have, you might have a keyboard player or another guitar player, most likely a bass player regardless. And a lot of the times as guitar players, we don't need to play six notes, right? If I were to write that chord on music, right, transcribe it, you're in a low octave all the way above the staff using ledger lines. That's a lot of space when it comes to music and register. So a lot of times we can thin out our chords and play smaller chords to make room for the other musicians. And that's why another reason why triads are so important, especially for rhythm guitar, all right? Keeping in the same vein a little bit, maybe a little further back in the time machine, 
it's hard to talk about triads without talking about the Rolling Stones, Keith Richards. You know, so many great riffs are triad based, and this is one of them. And this is Beast of Burden. It sounds like this. <laughs> Great little riff there, great song, Beast of Burden is a classic. All we're doing here is we're playing B and E. Chords we've seen in some of the previous examples, 987, 999, B. And again, now we're introducing a minor chord for the first time, right, on this string set, 11, 9, 9. This is C sharp minor and it's taken from this minor bar chord, which again, hopefully you know. Right? And then this shape, 9, 11, 9, 9, to get to the next chord A, all we have to do is put our middle finger down on the second string. And there's our A chord. Really nice change. Really close voicing change from going. that style of chord progression, right? Again, you probably have done that before, right? So there you go, Beast of Burden, another classic triad riff. And then I'm saving the best for last. This one's a lot of fun, albeit probably a little harder than the other ones. Uh, this is from a Dream Theater song called Innocence Faded, it's off the Awake album. There's a whole outro solo, which is awesome, one of my favorite Petrucci solos. And the section leading up to that is this section right here. And I'll play it for you and then we'll explain it a little bit. It's all crazy dream theater right there. But that is so fun. That's a, such a fun section. And again, similarly to Crazy Train, how they introduced the chugging, right? Because it is kind of metalish. Same thing, Dream Theater's trying to keep it heavy here, and Petrucci's chugging on that low string. And it's actually, the progression of it is actually pretty simple. We're doing the same thing, and just moving it down, right? Obviously the rhythm is different, and that's what makes it interesting, but we're playing this major chord, 999, to this major chord, 987, to this one. It's essentially an E, B, G. And we're moving that, steps but the only thing that changes there is the rhythm it's not played the same way nice suspension right there off of this major triad that's the same thing as if I play this D chord That kind of sound is a suspension sound, all right? And there you go. Six awesome triad riffs that you must know. Again, I think triad riffs are severely underutilized, specifically amongst guitar players. We don't really spend a lot of time learning them and they really do so much for fretboard vision, fretboard navigation, soloing, improvising, and song writing. So definitely, I encourage you to incorporate some triad practice into your routine. Down in the description below, you can find a link for the tabs. And as always, let me know what you come up with. So until then, I'll see you next time. Thanks a lot.